In this video, we're going to look at connecting to our Raspberry Pi using a form of two-factor authentication called um, certificate keys. So if you've watched any of my previous videos, you should be fairly familiar with um, connecting to your Raspberry Pi using PuTTY, and you would give it a normal username and password. One of the things that makes this uh, a little bit insecure is that most users will probably stick with the default username, which is Pi, which gives any unwanted visitors to your, to your device um, half of the information they require to connect in. So if you're using software such as Thing or uh, any sort of network scanner, you'd be able to identify on the network that there is a Raspberry Pi present because what can happen is these devices can derive from the MAC address and um, the vendor that this um, device is produced by. So you simply scan the network and you can find out that there's a Raspberry Pi on the network. So what we want to do is we want to beef up the security. So we'll look at the standard model, which is one factor authentication. So we have one thing, which is our password. So we have a standard network here. We have uh, uh, our internet connection, connecting to our router, over an external network. And then internally on our internal network, we have a Raspberry Pi and let's say a Windows laptop. Um, and we make an SSH connection to that um, Raspberry Pi and we give it our username and we give it our password and we get that all important SSH command line access to the Pi that we want to. So we look at this new model and we say we add this certificate key. So we do the same thing, we give it um, a username, a password, but this time we give it that second factor, which is our SSH key. Now, what an SSH key will actually look like is just a, a text file, um, and um, we'll present that to our Raspberry Pi, and uh, the Raspberry Pi will be aware um, of our key and will allow us access. And in the video, we're going to look at how to set that up. Okay, so to make it completely clear what two-factor authentication is, it's when you have um, two different types of login details. So you could, for example, have a password. Um, having two passwords is not two-factor authentication. It's one, it's one factor authentication twice. So two-factor authentication would be, for example, um, a password, um, a certificate key, or maybe a one-time password um, fob, so a password that only um, is accurate for say a minute like something you might get with your internet banking um, and then something that you are something that you are could be um, biometrics it could be fingerprint scanning or an optical scan um, so basically what you have is something that you know a password that you retain in your head um, something that you have um, like maybe a key fob that you get you from your bank and something that you are might be a fingerprint so if you have two of those it's two factor authentication and three of those it's three factor authentication we care about this because this is what businesses do to beef up their security for users. And um, it's a way to make sure that we uh, have the connection to our Raspberry Pi is as secure as possible. Obviously, it's not relevant for most people because it's a development board. But for some people, they might want this at an uh, extra level of security. The first thing that you're going to need to do is to get hold of a copy of um, some software called PuttyGen. This is made by the same people who make the... Putty SSH client, and it's going to allow us to create our um, certificates. So Google for Putty Gen, and the first hit that you hopefully get will be the um, the correct website, that one there, and scroll down and find uh, Putty Gen. So I don't know that software and uh, double click on the executable to run it and it's going to ask us to uh, create some random um, movements with the mouse what this does is it takes the coordinates of where the mouse is on the screen and it uses it uh, th those random movements to actually create um, essentially a seed to generate the, SS um, the SSH certificate so there the first thing we get from that is our um, public key so what you're going, going to want to do is to open up a normal um, PuTTY session, an SSH connection, to your Raspberry Pi using um, your standard username and password um, login. OK. So once you've logged into your Pi with your username and password, you're going to look for the file sudo authorized keys. So if you run the command sudo nano.ssh forward slash authorize underscore, underscore keys and copy that public key um, so select all of that text copy that and then paste that into the authorized keys 
what you're essentially doing here is you're saying if a user connects with this public key, um, it's an authorized key, so we recognize it and we'll allow that connection through. Now, if we quickly run the command um, more.ssh forward slash authorized key, we can make sure that public key from our client, our Windows machine, um, is allowed in there. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to give the key a password. So um, in that field, type in your password. And um, once you've done that, we're going to want to save those um, public and private keys to our laptop. So click uh, Save Public Key and uh, give it a name, Public, good. And um, then obviously uh, save your private key. Okay, so once that's done, we have a copy of our public and our private keys on our Windows laptop. So the next thing we need to do is to go to our standard PuTTY um, software. We're going to create a saved session. So give it the host name of your Pi and give it a saved name. So we're just going to call this Pi for now. Okay, so select that session. We want to select under connections and SSH auth. And what we're going to do is we're going to connect to that our private key. So that's the, the, the private.ppk file we created earlier on. So once that's done, go back up to session and click um, save. And make sure you've got the Pi um, profile selected and click save. And then you can see there that that um, has been saved under that connection. So now if you try and uh, double click on that Pi um, session and you type in the IP address Pi, you get this new um, prompt which says authenticating with public key and then it gives the RSA um, key ID. So um, I gave that the password and I've logged in with a combination of my username and a certificate and a password. So at the moment it's possible for a user to still connect in with just a password. So if you edit the file slash etc slash ssh slash sshd underscore config and then you scroll down and what you're looking for is a parameter called password authentication. At the moment it has the hash in front of it meaning it's commented out. So what you want to do is to delete that hash so it becomes active and um, we're going to change it so that where it says password authentication is yes, which is the default, we're going to change that to no. What that means is a user can no longer connect in with just a username and password. They have to present a certificate. So to make sure we do that, we can reboot the Pi, which is the easiest way of doing it, or we can restart the SSH services. I found rebooting the Pi is the best thing. So now we go back to that profile and we load it again and we notice that we still have our uh, private key loaded there. So we go in and we uh, log in with username Pi. We can see we're still authenticating with our SSH key and um, we type in our password and it all works. Great, nothing's changed and, and that's exactly what we wanted. However, if we go in with SSH again but we don't use the save session and we just type in the IP address and I type in Pi, which is my username, I get this disconnect because I no longer um, can connect with just a password because I haven't presented my public key. And that's essentially how you lock down your system.